Hey. <laughs> this week is a doozy. Buckle up. We're going on a trip to our favorite rocket ship right through the skies. Going to hell. Hello. Hi. It's Kendall here. If you're new around here, welcome. Not new around here, what is up home skill at Biscuit? Happy Saturday. Don't know what Saturday is. It's when I do something on my channel called Bad Movies and the Beat. The series on my channel where I talk about bad movies while putting my makeup on. But this week my makeup's already on because um, this one hurt me and I cannot focus on more than that. <laughs> the makeup's already done, babe. Um, God, this might be in the top three worst movies I've done. Um, but before we talk about that, hi, I missed last week. That's because I was down in Austin. I went to DreamCon. Uh, a friend of mine was like, hey, you wanna go to DreamCon? So we went and it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, I met so many of you guys down there. I think that was the most concentrated of uh, an event where I met so many of you guys. So it was a lot of fun. I bought so much shit I don't need including but not limited to this Agretzko backpack. And it has a little tail on it. Several photos of Sephiroth. I will say for those of you that draw the almost not safe for work, arguably not safe for work art at anime cons and stuff like that, I really need more equality. I wanna see Sephiroth schlong, okay? Oh, I also released an album. Listen to it if you want. Uh, it's on streaming sites. Why did I lose so much energy plugging myself specifically? I just feel a piece of me die each time I do that, but I think it's pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, I'll link that uh, below. Okay, ad roll Kenny, thank you. Hello everyone, this is ad roll Kenny and today's video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon. <laughs> Raycons Everyday Earbuds offer style, function, and quality at half the price of other premium audio brands. Optimized gel tips, they got them for a customized fit so that you can have them secure while you're doing whatever you do in life, whether that be listening to music, working, exercising, exercising while listening to music and working. Raycon has got you covered and they won't come out, baby. They give you eight hours of playtime. The case lasts for 32 hours. They're compact, adorable, come in a bunch of different colors. I really love this rose gold one. It's my personal favorite, but you know, do you? They have three different sound functions. I'm a bass girl, but there's also clear and balanced, as well as noise isolation and awareness mode. Raycon is co-founded by Ray J, loved by celebrities inside and outside of the music game, like Snoop Dogg, Brandy, Mike Tyson, they loving it. And you're sure to love it too. They also have a 30 day free return policy, so. There's really nothing to lose. So if you would like to try out Raycon, feel free to click on the link below. Go to buyraycon.com slash Kenny to get 15% off your Raycon purchase. Big thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get on to the debauchery, baby. As a side note, for those of you wondering if I'm still obsessed with Sleep Token, that album, yes. It's just depends on what song wants to play in my head at any given time. All right, time to kill the mood. Let's talk about this week's video. Curiosity killed a lot of things and one of those things was me. But, uh, last time we were here, we talked about Deadly Dilf. Tubi, uh, if you wanna check that out, check it out up above or check it out in a bad movie and beat playlist. Um, I will, before we even get started on this, I'm gonna apologize to you. <laughs> a part of me is like, you shouldn't even make a video on this. But uh, it, again, it's one of those, it's one of those things that I've seen and I just can't, keep it within me. <laughs> so I'm gonna share it with the internet. I am so sorry. <laughs> so towards the tail end of last year, uh, there was a clip going around on Twitter of the trailer of this Filipino movie called My Father, Myself. And I've talked about it, you know, here and there over the course of the last few months since it came out, because I had been talking about how it looked completely batshit crazy, really, really sh just, horrible, like a bad idea in every way, but I, I hadn't been able to find it with subtitles, so I have not seen it. Guess who found it? <laughs> and it's um in all the ways as bad as I expected and in some ways worse. If you're familiar with the Bad Movies in a Beat series, 
particularly in the last like six months to a year, I've been uh, periodically delving into really awful, campy, telenovela-esque movies from the Philippines. Um, they feed something within me when I'm craving a particular taste of chaos. Like I wouldn't consider myself an expert on Filipino dramas by any means, but I think I've dabbled enough to say, you know, I'm still novice, but I kind of know the general things that I notice. Someone's gonna cheat. It's gonna be very dramatic. We're gonna have a good monologue. Like, how could you do this to me? You know, real good, real, you know. <laughs> It feeds something, you know, sometimes you just need that catharsis, that, that, ah. So when you, when you watch something like that, you kind of expect, again, chaos, you expect mess. However, <laughs> even within that genre of mess, this movie reached a new level, a new test of my tolerance, of my patience. And the movie is only an hour and a half, maybe an hour, 40 minutes, give or take. If you look up My Father, Myself, it has a deceptively simple synopsis. A lot of these truly batshit movies tend to. A lawyer is left to care for a massacre survivor who happens to be the son of his former client. His wife and daughter welcome the boy as part of the family. But as the kids get older, the daughter confesses her love for the boy. No, that is not what this movie is. That's like 4% of what this movie is. This movie is actually more so about a man who adopts his dead friend's son and nothing terrible happens at all after that. Not once, not one time. <laughs> it's a drama about family. <laughs> it's about consequences. It's a horrid mess, uh, truly awful. And today we're gonna talk about it because I have a masochism kink and apparently so do you. The movie was released on Christmas last year and I just wanna say that cause that's particularly funny to me. Without further ado, This is My Father, Myself, 2022. So the movie opens with a middle-aged man in like a small kind of village town talking to the workers in the area and he's immediately assassinated in the movie. Like, damn, we didn't even have a buildup. We barely had opening credits and he gone. <laughs> uh, and I laughed, I'm so sorry. Uh, I was looking over last year's Bad Movies in a Beat comp compilation and I realized how often I laugh at people getting shot in these movies. And it made me really reflect. I'm like, Kendall, maybe that you shouldn't do that. Not today, because <laughs> bitch, not today. I have a lot to work with today. <laughs> So, uh, but yes, I put that on my notes, my to-do list. Stop laughing at death. Okay. But it's just because terrible movies have a tendency to not have very good pacing, especially in relation to someone dying. They tend to be quite abrupt. Like they don't know how to build tension. So that shit made me laugh. Within that tearful context, we do get a very somber reminder that this man, uh, you know, had a family. He had a child and the child is there, a son who finds his father's dead body in the street. The dead man's friend, his name is Robert. Robert was also this man's lawyer and they both find his body uh, just abandoned sort of in the street. Now, Robert is godfather to the child. So he then becomes Matthew's adopted father. He tells Matthew that he is family now and that he will care for him and that he now has a sister named Micah and the love and support of his wife, Amanda. So Matthew is taken into the home and it's obvious that the family is very, very wealthy. Um, they have housekeepers and this giant lavish home um, and they welcome him in. The daughter Micah seems quite taken uh, with him immediately as well. But she's a child and so she has the tact of, of any small child. So she goes up to him and says, you sad, you look sad, what you sad for? But she does clumsily offer her condolences and tells him that he is not alone and never will be with his new family. Fast forward and Matthew and Micah are graduating and Matthew is the head of the class. He gives a graduation speech. He speaks of his deceased father, how he was a leader and a civil advocate. And he draws inspiration from the memory of him as well as from Robert who has inspired him as he is a human rights lawyer um, and also shows him the, the logistics of sorts of fighting for 
people and trying to bring forth justice. Now, being that Matt seems to be this super smart golden child, Michael does kind of just fall into his shadow, but she does well in her own right. Both of them end up going out to celebrate with friends and they get quite drunk. And the friends kind of unprovoked are like, so are y'all dating now? I hope not. <laughs> like, sure, you're sure you're not blood related, but you've been raised together as children with the same parents. That's weird. <laughs> That's like y'all been raised as siblings. And so they say essentially that like, no, we see each other as siblings. That's not. After they leave, Micah, very drunk, ends up admitting to Matthew that she does not see him as a brother. She sees him as more than that. And again, sure, yeah, they're not blood related, but still weird. It's still incest. It's still incest to me. But luckily Matthew uh, rejects her for now and just puts her to bed. And I'm like, okay. The next morning, Micah ends up admitting to her feelings uh, for Matthew to her mother. Initially for like three and a half seconds, she was like, oh, he's your brother. But then with like shockingly little convincing, she's like, eh, okay, I support you. And it's pretty obvious if anything were to happen between Micah and Matthew, Micah probably would be the person to initiate it. But being that both Micah and Matthew are studying for their bar exam, they do end up spending quite a lot of time together because of that. And while studying, she brings up the confession that she made while drunk. She's like, it didn't matter that I was drunk. I mean it, by the way. And he's like, bitch, stop. <laughs> like, stop. Oh my God. But she won't take no for an answer because mom has already given her support. She just has to tell dad. And then she tries to make a move on him in public. And he's like, stop bitch. Also, she never like really asked if he returns any of these feelings. <laughs> so she's just very much so like, I, this is happening. And he's like, ah. So I was like, okay, so they're definitely at no, right? He seems very repulsed by this. But by the next thing they fucking in a hotel. I was like, what? Whoa, whoa, who, where, huh? If I pause here, if I get overwhelmed here, we are not gonna finish I, again. I am so sorry. Um, They come back home the next morning, lie to their parents and say that they were out all night studying and lost track of time. The daughter keeps going on like, hey, we gotta tell our dad about us. And he's like, I don't want them to be disappointed in me. What do you think they're gonna say when they find out I screwed their daughter? And then she slaps him in the face. Amanda, the mom, ends up telling Robert, the dad, uh, about Micah and Matthew liking each other. And he's like, no, no way they are siblings as far as I see them. But it was pretty obvious that something else was brewing, that everyone in some way or another can sense. Meanwhile, uh, the daughter, Micah, is still forcing herself onto Matthew. Uh, there are so many layers of terrible to this scene. Well, all of this, this is all so bad, just, Ah. He's constantly like pushing her away, like get off of me. Like people could see us, people could do this that, and the other. And I'm like, will you stop touching this mother? Leave him alone. Oh my God. Like even if he wasn't for all intents and purposes, your brother, stop grabbing on Like what the hell? You predator, stop. Eventually they both pass the bar exam. Uh, but specifically Matthew got the highest score. She tries to force herself on him in celebration again. All of y'all suck. Oh my God. Okay. They have a big celebration dinner at which the father asks what companies they both were looking uh, into to work at. And Robert is like to Matthew, hey, you should come to my firm, be a human rights lawyer. He invites his colleague over and uh, he recognizes Matthew as Robert's client's Shit. He recognizes Matthew as Robert's deceased client's son that he adopted. He's all grown up now. He's now a lawyer officially. You know, maybe he should come work for the company. He then leaves the home. What was he over there for then? <laughs> he came all the way over here to say, oh yeah, that's him and walked out. That night, continuing the celebrations from earlier in the day, Robert invites Matthew to have like a heart to heart, a drink, men, lawyer to lawyer, father son moment, like a bonding moment. One of those pivotal, like you're 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 a lawyer now, you're an, you're a man, you know, stuff like that. And Robert says something along the lines of like, when your father was alive, we used to drink like this. Then remarks about how Matthew looks like his father. He then abruptly asks if he still thinks about his dead dad, who is dead, deceased, and pass on. Somebody brought up that joke a while ago. I haven't done it in a while. Also, what the f 
You still sad your daddy dead? Mm hmm. I think you'd be over it by now. I don't know. Anyway, he says, yeah. And Robert says he misses him as well. In what way do you miss him? Y'all were friends. Hmm. Robert then tells Matthew why his dad died. The specifics of that had been uh, kept from him until he was old enough to know. So apparently now, again, they're having this like, you're a man drink. I guess this is time. Matthew's father was killed uh, as a cover up for an opposing company that wanted to seize the peasant lands that he was advocating for people to, you know, fight for. And so as the leader of this kind of peasant group, uh, he was their biggest threat, so he was killed. Matthew gets angry and um, Robert is like, well, if you want to make a real change, if you want revenge, uh, you should become a human rights lawyer like me. Ew, why are you touching him like that? No, 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 ah, no, no, ah! no, I'm so sorry. Hey, run away and act like it never happened. Thank God. Please, Jesus, do that. And, uh... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Robert goes back to his wife, Amanda, and they have a conversation about their children, and, and suddenly Robert's like, well, isn't he our son? He's like, why are you okay with Micah liking him then? Fair. However... <laughs> I would argue it's worse <laughs> that that y'all. I don't know what's worse, actually. I don't know. It's all so bad. You're like a parental figure. Yeah. And a boss if he ends up working at your. Oh, my God. It's just bad. Also, if you see Micah and Matt's theoretical relationship is legitimate, that's also your daughter's boyfriend. Oh, Amanda wants to have sex. And Robert doesn't want to. This seems to be like a like a pattern for them, for him in particular. This is just something that she's become accustomed to, maybe a bit suspicious of. Back to Micah and Matthew. Why does he have a headshot of himself in his room? <laughs> she is like, do you plan to tell our parents about what happened? Do you love me or not? This like whether or not Matthew will tell our parents thing seems to be a big issue for her, but I'm confused because she already told the mom. You think the mom didn't tell him? That's the least of the issues with this script. So it's fine, whatever. Also the, if do you love me or not? I don't think at any point he's ever given any like explicit interest in her. She's just been kind of like overwhelming him, arguably coercing him. Not arguable. I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty straightforward coercion, but um, also you gonna be sick when you find out that he wanna f your dad. He's like, I'm afraid of what people will say. And she's like, f them. Are you in love with me or not? I mean, at least he has some shame. That's the bare minimum. She's just like, let's tell the world. I'm f my brother. <laughs> oh my God. Micah ends up telling mom that Something physical did happen between her and Matt. While Matthew goes to his father's grave. There he sees Robert, who is there to visit the grave as well. There Matthew apologizes for the kiss. And Robert says, it's nothing. We'll just act like it didn't happen. And I'm just like, that's please, please do. Let's just bury this deep within the shame box and never open it again. But Matthew's like, why do you push me away? And Robert is like, I shouldn't have. It, is that not what I should be doing? Then Robert insinuates that he isn't gay. I'm so tired of these weird ass movies ignoring the actual point. Like the problem isn't that you're gay. The problem is that you know, we have this weird, this weird incesty thing that you're doing. But Matthew hits him with this bomb of like, oh, but you not gay. But when I was a kid, I saw you kissing my daddy. He got your tea, bitch. Matcha. He's like, you weren't even hung over today, so it's not like you were that drunk when we kissed. I am in love with you. And he's like, no, I see you as a son. Later, the mom goes up to Matthew and is like, I know about you and Micah, I'm okay with it. Half of the parents down, I guess, I don't know. Matthew goes off to his job interview at the place where he already has a job, essentially. Again, Robert's law firm. You know, be the... Th What's transpired, I'm confused about how excited Robert looks when he sees that his son 
who has been trying to initiate a physical relationship with him is not working with him, but he seems really excited about it. Later, Micah continues to be upset that Matthew won't tell now Robert that they're together. And then he like abruptly kisses her. Oh my God. This movie is giving me like, actual whiplash <laughs> they end up f***ing again which of course i can't show because yes but um but the one thing to note is that during this explicit sex scene <laughs> matthew is uh thinking about his kiss with robert oh, this movie is so convoluted and stupid and disgusting oh my god but uh in the morning robert sees uh, Matthew leaving Micah's room. So that leads him to believe that something is happening between Micah and Matthew. But we can't worry about that because he got his first day of work, baby. Matt ends up working on the same case as Robert and Robert just gives him a bunch of busy work so he's out of the way, which is the response that I thought he would give him. I didn't, like I said, I didn't understand why he was so peppy about the idea of his son coming to work with him considering considering but they continue to work the day closes slowly but surely other people go home and eventually it's just robert and matt left in the office and robert's very like passive aggressive uh, because of this whole weird thing but also finding out that micah and matthew are in a relationship slash robert presumably has some feelings for matt perhaps because he reminds him of the dead father <sighs> robert's like i can't do anything because i'm married and matt's like to a woman you don't love one that you cheated on with my father <laughs> matt then kisses him again robert pushes him away again <sighs> oh god <laughs> and they start fighting but it ends up being a passionate precursor god damn it wow uh they f and they like it's horrible to see I, all the sex scenes are just so no they're all explicit they're all like oh okay uh, and it's awful and there's no amount of beautiful orchestra that can play that can take away the pain in my heart right now but afterwards matt is like should i end things with micah robert's like N no for so many reasons one i don't want to hurt my daughter two i don't want people to find out that i'm gay especially considering i'm a human rights lawyer apparently you can't be gay as a human rights lawyer but more importantly that i'm having sex with my adopted son that looks really bad we have to keep this a secret they were not gonna stop though <laughs> a very small consolation prize at least they're ashamed back at the home the mom seems to have more and more inclination that something is going on between robert and matthew but she doesn't really say anything about it but it would seem that she's kind of like Micah eventually officially tells Robert that they are a couple and Robert is like, great, we are finally a family for real. <laughs> this is so ghetto. This is so ghetto. Does that stop Robert and Matt from in the office again? Absolutely not. But Rob is like, you got to continue to date Micah even if we keep Wow, what a terrible father. <laughs> Again, even if they weren't in this like raised together as siblings thing, that's very f***ed up. He's like, Rob's like, let's just keep doing this until Micah falls out in love with you. She's kind of like about it, but okay. He's like, she'll, she'll get over it. <laughs> like, I'm not leaving my wife. I wouldn't have anything if it weren't for her and her family's money. Um, so this is the best we got. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> okay, hold on, I got this. So they finally reach, I guess, as close to a to a conclusion as possible, given the circumstances. <laughs> and just when you didn't think this movie could get stupider, Micah's pregnant. <laughs> For some reason, this is 
like a really bad thing for Robert, even though we knew they were and like, what do you think happens sometimes, especially if you didn't say, hey, make sure y'all use protection. But he's very upset about that. And apparently this is when he's like, they can't do this. This is incest. <laughs> and, and the mom is like, they're gonna have to get married then because she can't have a bastard baby. And the dad is like, no, this is so gross like they are family the mom's uh suggestion is that we'll just tell everybody because they know we adopted him they know he's not our biological kid we'll just tell everybody that they've been in an arranged marriage since childhood and i i don't know i guess that does that make it better i don't i don't think i, I but they were still raised i don't, whatever but yeah they're gonna get married assuming you don't have like another reason why they shouldn't robert Back at the grave, Rob and Matt are there to deliver flowers. Like, bitch, I don't, sorry, I was about to say something very real. <laughs> Is this too dark of a joke? Is this gonna ruin the mood? F it. I haven't delivered this many flowers to my own dead mom. What the hell? What's she gonna do? She did. That's what my mama used to say when she was alive. Why would I go to the grave all the time? You did. I miss you, big D. Love you, man. But yeah, why you got so many flowers to deliver? Where they going? While there, <laughs> Rob is like, I feel the same way about you that you feel about me. I am in love with you. This movie's fucking relentless. <laughs> like, your daughter is pregnant with his baby. He is your adopted son. Oh my God, please stop kissing. Stop. Stop. <laughs> oh God. I have nothing left. This movie has taken everything from me. I will never go back to the day before I ruined my own life. <sighs> okay, Micah catches them kissing. She slaps them. They all start crying, ugly crying. She then heatedly asks, <laughs> she then heatedly asks who's better in bed her or her father i need a minute i'm sorry i really do <laughs> or is it just like you know like father like daughter please stop i'm begging you i i don't know how much more i can take <laughs> Please let me go. <laughs> These are not fake tears in my eyes. My eyes are actually on the brink of crying. <laughs> She's like, you have to choose who you love more. It's between dad and your baby that I'm carrying. You have until tomorrow to choose. So the wife finds out, presumably Micah tells her, and she's like, a part of me always knew you were gay. I knew about the affair you had with the dead dude. I chose to ignore it because I loved you. I thought I can make you love me. She says something very like obtuse, like I thought I could change you, uh, insinuating change him from being gay. Uh, she calls him disgusting damn bleeding did she really hit <laughs> did she actually hit him was that a movie hit or did she just deck him in the mouth <laughs> she's like we're going to keep this a secret we are going to pretend that we are the perfect family how do you even acknowledge this like i i don't i but robert's like i can't i can't live a lie i can't do this anymore i have to be who i am be who you are matthew goes to uh, amanda the wife and basically apologizes for himself and his father because they both f***ed her husband uh, <laughs> and she's like all i need you to do is to make Micah happy, marry her, care for the baby, move to another country, forget my husband. And Matt seems to be pretty resigned to that idea as well. He seems like, okay, I'll, I'll do that. Matt and Rob have one last talk and Matt tells him that he has chosen Micah and his child. And Rob is like, essentially, if you would have chosen me, I would have chosen you. I would have left everything for you. And then with like three minutes left in the movie, he kills himself. <laughs> <sighs> he
yep. Not this week. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves a uh, note to them apologizing for how much of a mess he made of their lives and um, they have a funeral. And then Micah and Matt skip off into their new beautiful life together. That's the end of the movie, by the way. I don't have any closing remarks. I think I'm just gonna close this out. <laughs> if you like this video for some reason. Feel free to like this video. Follow me on social media. It's Kenny JD. Wanna cleanse? Maybe listen to my album because it could be no worse than this. <laughs> and uh, yeah, bye. Very topically appropriate. <laughs>